Do you love a good mystery? Have you ever wondered who Jack the Ripper really was? What about what really happened on Malaysian Airlines Flight 370? And then there is one that has been questioned through many generations. What is the secret of the Bermuda Triangle? Today we look at 10 mysteries that have officially been solved. But before we dive into that, if you have not as of yet, please consider subscribing to our channel. We are aiming to hit 10,000 subscribers before the end of 2024. Your support helps us to continue to bring you more discoveries across our globe. Now, without further ado, let's jump in. At number 10, we have the collapse of the Mayan civilization. For a long time, people have puzzled about one of the freakiest societal collapses in human history. Why did the Maya people abandon dozens of cities they'd built in the Yucatan Peninsula in the 700s or 800s AD and allow what had been a highly developed civilization to turn into ruins? Some have theorized that the Maya were probably defeated in battle by rival peoples or that the ruling class was overthrown in a peasant revolt. Others have advanced more outlandish explanations, such as an invasion by UFOs. But in a study published in 2012, Arizona State University researchers who analyzed archaeological data with an eye to figuring out environmental conditions in the Mayan heyday found evidence to substantiate a theory first advocated by historian Jared Diamond in his 2005 book, Collapse. The researchers discovered that the Maya had burned and chopped down so much of the forests that they had altered the land's ability to absorb solar radiation which in turn made clouds and rainfall scarce. That exacerbated a naturally occurring drought and caused erosion and soil depletion, which caused agriculture to fail. With less food available, workers were forced to leave the lowland cities to avoid starvation, and everything collapsed as a result. Coming in at number nine, we have the Franklin Expedition. English explorer Sir John Franklin sailed to Canada in 1845 with two centrally heated ships, a crew of 128 and a three-year supply of food, hoping to find an Arctic route connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, what we now refer to as the Northwest Passage. Instead, Franklin and his crew vanished. More than 30 expeditions looked for them, in fact so many that the death toll for searchers actually exceeded the lost Franklin crew. Finally, in 1859, skeletal remains were found, along with a log that stopped in April 1848. After Franklin's ships had become stuck in the ice, the crew spent nearly two years trying to get them free. But after Franklin and 23 members died, the remainder set out on a doomed march across the Canadian tundra. Some resorted to cannibalism. So what actually went wrong? Researchers from a 2013 study attributed the crew's demise to the consequences of two winters trapped on the ice and running short of food. The surviving men had no option but to desert the ships and trek south to the mainland. But they were ill-equipped and probably in poor health, so escape was beyond them. Their plight was desperate and all died in the attempt. Another part of the mystery was resolved in 2014 when a Canadian robotic submarine located the wreckage of one of Franklin's ships under the Arctic ice. However, divers are still excavating that ship every summer. Taking the number eight spot is the Tunguska Blast of 1908. On June 30th, 1908, a fireball streaked through the Siberian sky followed by an enormous explosion that leveled 830 square miles or 2,150 square kilometers of remote forest. Scientists later calculated that the Tunguska event, named after a nearby river, released an amount of energy 1,000 times greater than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima in 1945 and enough to kill 80 million trees. Weirdly, no crater was ever found. Eventually, Ukrainian researchers proved that Tunguska was, in fact, caused by a meteor, 
according to a 2013 article in Planetary and Space Science. They analyzed samples of peat dating from that summer and found it contained fragments of minerals found in meteorites, as well as Lonsdaleite, a substance known to form from shock waves following an explosion. Just as significant, the combination of all these elements was nearly identical to a meteor impact site in Arizona. So why was no crater ever found, you might ask? Well, because the explosion happened in the air. Experts believe that to be the reason no impact crater was created, but it is still classed as an impact event. The seventh position belongs to the pyramids of Egypt. Back in the late 1960s and early 1970s, proponents of the hypothesis that human civilization had been jump-started by extraterrestrial visitors pointed to the Egyptian pyramids as persuasive evidence. The ancient Egyptians could not have moved those massive multi-ton stone blocks with just muscle power, they argued, and suggested that alien anti-gravity technology was a more plausible explanation. Fortunately, in 2014, University of Amsterdam physicists materialized to rescue us from paperback pseudoscience. By analyzing an ancient tomb drawing, they figured out that a large team of workers could have hauled the giant stone blocks on a sled and poured water on the sand in their path to reduce the friction and make it possible to drag the blocks to the pyramid. A small amount of water would cause the sand to become glued together and create a sort of paved road. Other researchers also have suggested that the Egyptians used clay as a lubricant, and it may be that they used more than one method. Whatever the truth may be, however, there will forever be some who still believe in the possibility of extraterrestrial help for the ancient Egyptians. At number six, we have another stone-moving mystery, the sailing stones of Death Valley. Since the 1940s, people have been scratching their heads about the apparently strange things going on in a dry lake bed in Death Valley, called the Racetrack Playa. There, every 10 years or so, stones as big as 700 pounds or about 318 kilograms mysteriously seem to move around on their own, leaving long tracks behind them in the parched desert surface. How is this realistically possible, you might wonder? Well, over the years, various explanations have been put forward, from dust devils to films of slippery algae, but none of them seem too convincing in all honesty. So what is the truth then? Finally, in 2011, researchers from Scripps Institution of Oceanography at the University of California, San Diego, decided to solve the enigma. Since the National Park Service wouldn't allow them to attach GPS devices to the rocks themselves, they brought in 15 similarly sized pieces of stone and monitored them. It took two years, but they finally got the answer. In wintertime, the playa sometimes fills up with a thin layer of water from rainfall, which freezes overnight and forms thin sheets of ice. When the sun comes out the next day, the ice melts and cracks into panels that light winds, then blow across the ice, carrying the rocks with them. But the stones typically slide at a speed of only a few inches per second, slowly enough that visitors can't really see the movement from a distance. Number five bears the question, where did Stonehenge's giant stones come from? One of the biggest enigmas about Stonehenge, the massive prehistoric stone circle that was erected in England between 3000 and 1500 BCE, is the origin of the massive sarsen stones that are arranged in a post and lintel formation. It was believed that the stones came from somewhere in North Wiltshire, a county in southwest England, but they couldn't pin down a precise location. Then in 2019, Researchers had a stroke of luck when a man who had worked on a restoration project at Stonehenge in 1958 provided them a 42.5 inch or 108 centimeter long and roughly one inch or 25 millimeter thick core that had been extracted from one of the sarsens, which he had taken back to the US with him. 
scientists were able to do tests on the sample and create a geochemical fingerprint of the sarsens. Then, after analyzing similar stones from 20 different sites across southern England and comparing the chemistry, they narrowed down the source to West Woods in Wiltshire, today a popular recreational destination for hikers, dog walkers and mountain bikers. Now for number four. Did Anastasia escape the Bolsheviks? A few years after Bolshevik assassins herded Tsar Nicholas II and his family members into a cellar and opened fire upon them in July 1918, a woman who called herself Anna Anderson surfaced in Europe, claiming to be the Tsar's youngest daughter, Anastasia. She said that she had been carried from the execution site by mysterious benefactors. Though rejected by Romanov relatives, her saga was sufficiently intriguing that Hollywood made it into a 1956 movie starring Ingrid Bergman. Rumors persisted that the young heiress to the throne had somehow escaped death. But in 1991, the mystery took another turn when it was revealed that the bodies of most of the Romanovs and their servants lay in a mass grave in Yekaterinburg, Russia but the bodies of a male and female child were missing. So we ask again, did Anastasia escape the Bolsheviks? Unfortunately, that faint hope that Anastasia had escaped was crushed in 2007, when archaeologists discovered a second grave containing two more youthful sets of bones. Like the first set, the new bones were matched with a sample of Nicholas II's DNA which had been extracted from bloodstains on a shirt worn during an 1891 assassination attempt. With all the Romanovs accounted for, it's now clear that Anastasia died as a young girl, with her family. At number three, we take a look at King Richard III. The English monarch Richard III whom Shakespeare portrayed as a megalomaniacal, malevolent hunchback, is one of the most famous villains in history. But while we've long known that Richard met defeat and apparently suffered his demise at the Battle of Bosworth Field in 1485, it remained a mystery exactly how he died. So, was he killed in battle? And if so, why was he never found dead? After more than 500 years, those questions were finally answered. In 2012, an old grave was discovered under a parking lot in Leicester, England, and five months later, DNA tests confirmed that the bones buried there belonged to Richard III. Additionally, in a 2014 study published in The Lancet, researchers revealed that forensic evidence showed that Richard had suffered 11 wounds, including nine blows to the skull. The lack of defensive wounds on his arms or hands led researchers to conclude that he had lost his helmet or removed it during the fighting, and then was killed either in sustained combat with an opponent, or he had been set upon by multiple attackers. They also found that while Richard had a spinal deformity, also known as scoliosis, he did not have a withered arm or a limp, as Shakespeare had depicted him. In the second last position, we question the involvement of the Umbrella Man in JFK's assassination. One of the weirdest enigmas of the 1963 assassination of President John F. Kennedy in Dallas was the presence of the Umbrella Man. This blurry figure is seen in photographs raising a black umbrella along the presidential route, even though the sky was clear. Some saw him as proof of a conspiracy an advanced man who was signalling the sniper. Others suspected that he might actually be an assassin himself, firing a poisoned dart gun concealed in his parasol. Though that idea does sound like something out of the imagination of Ian Fleming when writing the spy novel James Bond, but you can ignore that idea completely. In the late 1970s, the US House of Representatives reopened the JFK investigation. At the time, a 53-year-old Dallas warehouse manager named Louis Stephen Witt came forward and testified that he was the Umbrella Man. Granted, his explanation was a bit bizarre. Witt disliked JFK's father, former U.S. Ambassador to the United Kingdom Joseph P. Kennedy, 
whom he faulted for supporting British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain's appeasement policies toward Hitler. Chamberlain's trademark was his ever-present umbrella, and Witt chose that day to brandish a big, conspicuous one in an effort to needle the president. He brought along a visual aid to the hearing, a battered black umbrella that he claimed was the one he'd used that day. A committee staffer popped it open to reveal that it didn't contain a weapon. It bears mentioning that there remain a lot more questions surrounding the assassination of JFK. Of course, Lee Harvey Oswald was found guilty of first-degree murder. Police believed and still maintain that he acted alone. Taking our number one spot is the secret of the Bermuda Triangle. You've undoubtedly heard of the Bermuda Triangle, the area of water between Florida, Puerto Rico, and Bermuda that, according to pop mythology, contains some sort of malevolent force that causes ships, planes, and people to disappear, never to be seen again. Some have put the blame on extraterrestrial invaders capturing humans for study. Others say interdimensional vortices are the reason, and some even blame oceanic flatulence, a type of methane gas erupting from ocean sediments. While these theories might be interesting and even somewhat captivating, others feel the real mystery of the Bermuda Triangle is why people are still so eager to believe in it. Back in 1975, librarian and pilot Lawrence David Kusher published his investigation of the phenomena. When he actually reviewed the official reports on ships that paranormal authors had depicted as vanishing inexplicably, he found that they usually sank in bad weather or suffered explainable accidents, and that wreckage sometimes was recovered. Similarly, the US Coast Guard's website notes that the service does not recognize the existence of the so-called Bermuda Triangle as a geographic area of specific hazard to ships or planes, and says that after reviewing accidents there, nothing has been found that couldn't be explained. Do you feel there is truth to the explanation of Lawrence David Kusher, or do you subscribe to the conspiracy that the global leaders are still trying to cover up so much more? That concludes today's video. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the mysteries we've explored. If you found this video enjoyable, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Thanks for tuning in, and remember to keep that curiosity alive until our next encounter.